Right, I've fixed a few together now. What I've done is I've, I've um, put the halves on the end and gone round and joined five together. I've left this loose here, like that. Just took these together, so, and then I've joined four together. And, and I've done another row like that. And now you can see, just tuck that in, how the whole thing looks. You can see if I stand back that the uh, we're now forming a half circle like a polytunnel. It's coming up from the ground rather than along the ground, but at least you can see how it looks. Let's have a look at a few things here. Now look at the end here. See how it kicks out? It kicks out and then in and then out and then in as you go along the dome or the tunnel, I should say. This tunnel is going to have uh, another row like that. So it'll be twice as long as that with the two domes on the end. What we do first is we take, usually it's three sections. It can be more and sometimes less depending on what shapes. But what the aim is to join as many triangles as you can together. Uh, and cover them in one but without any folds so uh, this is a typical one we do three together very often you, it will it won't crease at all uh, um, so you, you get a nice neat finish and it's quicker because obviously you could cover them in one triangle at a time but that'll take you forever so what we do first is we fix the frame together uh, let me show you there's a screw here so we, we've screwed the single triangles together, these two sections together, these two sections together, to form, um, this looks a little bit like a half hex, it's actually not, but it's close, uh, and then we cover the whole structure. You can see that from the top, that's the curvature that we get for our dome, and you can see the film's covered here. It's nice and tight, and all, all we've done is we've pulled it over the sides, let me see if I can get a view here for you, and stapled it to the edge like that now later when we join these together we simply put a piece of put some a, a run of silicon along here cramp this cramp two together nip them up and then clean the silicon off the outside that, uh, but this method minimizes your joints obviously that's got there's no joint there that runs straight over the strut but that's your, that's your polythene covering Okay, I've made some uh, base sections. Uh, this is one here, for example. The plans will tell you the angle to cut on the top. There's a left and a right angle. And I'll just have a quick look at the plans. Um, here we go. The, uh, the plans show you the angles between them. Like that. Uh, now, uh, the thing with the plan, with the um, base sections is, obviously, uh, we have all the different, I've got them all cut here now, they all have uh, all the separate angles to be cut, it'll tell you in the plans what those are. But if we look at the model again, we'll see that, uh, here we go, these are the E ones, which are these below it. I've cross braced some of them for stability, and um, it's a good idea to cross brace the whole lot, I haven't finished all of mine yet. Um, but if you can imagine that the E section here has to be exactly the same size as the triangle above it, right? And it's easy to, if you imagine, by the time we go from here to here, 
we add all of these together and then add the whole top together it's very easy to be out you know three or four or five mil maybe that much uh, so it's probably a good idea if you either make these tight and build the dome from the back for one section at a time checking that this that they line up if you need to add a, a small sliver of wood add a small sliver or if you need to plane it down plane a little off then move on to the next one make sure that that's done evenly and then the next one that way your dome will end up even the whole way around okay I'm gonna have a quick word about the patterns for these bases the base sections now on the plans it looks pretty complicated because there's uh, let me just have a look here one two three four five different ones and they, they all have different angles uh, I'll look there close 16 uh, so it looks pretty complicated it's actually not that bad uh, this pattern here uh, you can see I've, I've got one on here uh, this runs past here so you, you start you put one section on here you run it all the way past and you put, put the next section to here then you run that one past and then you butt from there run that one past there and then finally down here now uh, this pattern here will do uh, C bases and E bases because they're exactly the same size they just have different angles on the edge and, I'm, and what I've done is I've put this little block in that's about three quarters of an inch and this is also doing the A section bases I've do, all I've done is I've added that little piece of wood in there to make it a tiny bit bigger because the A sections are just a little bit bigger so that's the one pattern for three different bases and the other patterns here and that's for the C bases that one there again it's just a simple piece of um, thin ply I've backed this one off with a bit of just stiffen it up a bit but it's just it's just thin ply uh, so they're not that hard to make What you end up is a shape like that, which is basically a pentagon using the pent triangles with a equilateral stuck on one side. And we'll look at the at the uh, model here, and you'll see that uh, that's the shape that we've got. So we need pentagon, uh, another one there, and two on this side as well. So we need four of them. I'll make I'll make them now. That's uh, how it looks on the on the.